Hello everyone. I want to start this week with the good news on the COVID-19 front. Our positivity and case rates are the lowest in Maryland among the large counties. We have the fourth lowest number of cases in the nation among jurisdictions over 800,000 people. And almost 50% of our residents have received both doses of Pfizer, Moderna, or a single dose of J&J, according to the CDC data. Two weeks after we hit that 50% mark, we will then follow the state of Maryland's guidelines. I know that the governor has announced an almost immediate end to virtually all restrictions other than indoor masking, but we will continue to follow the existing guidance because we're very close to having 50% of our residents fully vaccinated. One thing people need to understand is that when we hit 50%, that still means that almost 500,000 people have not been fully vaccinated. So that's a great concern, as that means a large number of people are still susceptible to getting the virus and passing the virus on. It is in no way a point of absolute safety, and people still need to think about what they're doing, particularly if you're not vaccinated. But in the meantime, we are continuing to vaccinate as many people as possible. And now the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for 12 to 15 year olds, which is great news. As soon as that approval is final, we will start vaccinating that age group. We remain concerned about the people who aren't getting vaccinated. According to the recent Maryland Health Department tracking poll on vaccines, results tell us that the top groups most hesitant in our state are political independents, those with a high school or less education, people who are uninsured, those who do not have a doctor, the religiously unaffiliated, and people between the ages of 18 and 34. We know how important vaccines are for public safety and for reopening, and we are doing all we can to encourage people to get vaccinated and making it easier for them to get vaccinated. Last week, we sent out 147,000 text messages to targeted areas of the county that have been disproportionately impacted by COVID. And next week, we will begin hosting FEMA mobile vaccination units to distribute 1,000 doses of vaccine to people in our community most likely at Lake Forest Mall. We are happy to report six county library locations will open back up on June 1st. Throughout the pandemic, our libraries have been open for access to their book collections. This reopening by appointment is another step toward full reopening. Along with libraries, senior centers are also opening back up in mid-June for in-person activities, while we also expand virtual programming. We will continue to reopen more libraries and recreation centers as quickly as we are able. I want to remind everyone that Maryland's executive order on rental evictions from Governor Hogan is still in effect and helps protect renters. If any resident is in the process of being evicted, they need to reach out to us and apply for rental relief if you're eligible. Furthermore, I recently joined other county executives from across the state in a letter to the governor requesting an extension of the rental eviction moratorium. This is because a recent ruling by a federal court would stop eviction protection under the federal government, which is another reason why we need Governor Hogan to not only keep, but extend the eviction moratorium throughout our state. We are also working and making progress on non-COVID-19 related issues. We are rethinking and reshaping public safety in our schools to provide the best social and mental health support for our students. We have a steering committee that will work in the short term to move new solutions forward as quickly as possible and within the next couple of months. We are creating an integrated microgrid and electric bus charging infrastructure at the Brookville Bus Depot in Silver Spring. This project will enable us to charge at least 44 ride-on buses and transition them from diesel to electric, reducing lifetime emissions by over 155,000 tons This is a major initiative in our effort to get to zero emissions by 2035. And finally, I want to acknowledge that we are reaching the end of Islam's holy month of Ramadan, a month of fasting and prayer. In addition, we are also celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Our county is fortunate to have an incredible blend of cultures and nationalities. It's one of the things that makes Montgomery County a wonderfully vibrant place to live, work, and play. We all have so much to look forward to. Let's work together and get vaccinated so we can get back to being with each other and enjoying all that our county has to offer. Thank you.